Welcome to the Heretic Mansion Shin Megami Tensei Podcast. I'm your host, John. I'm Jeff. And we are very excited today because there was a new trailer for Persona 5, and they actually gave us a release date this time. Yay! And it wasn't delayed. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Which, it's... honestly, I was expecting it was, but... Oh, I would laugh. I'd piss myself laughing if it's like Ethan had delayed again. <laughs> I mean, here's the funny thing. Atlas, they in in the trailer before they said it was gonna release in summer 2016, but it actually released. The, well, okay, the release date they gave us was September 29th, 2016, in Japan, which is the very last day of summer. Uh, f- 15th. September 15th. My bad. Yep. Uh, yeah, very last day of summer. <laughs> Technically, it's in the summer. <laughs> Barely. Barely. And, and the funny thing is, Atlas is now saying that it's going to release in North America in 2016, so maybe that means it's going to release on December 31st, 2016. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I see Atlas being assholes with that. <laughs> New Year's Eve release. Um, well, we did tell you it was being 2016, but... Um, yeah, no, it's great news. We got the we got quite a bit of info on it. Yeah. I mean, b- before they or not before, but while they released the trailer, they were showing the stream and then they showed the trailer on that and they showed some other stuff which I didn't really watch because I was asleep because I have I didn't watch the stream. Yeah, I, I didn't watch the stream. I just saw the trailer and I, and I read some like other confirmed news like on on gaming websites and whatever. Um, such as, like, um, there's a Clutcher's Edition, 20th Anniversary Team Clutcher's Edition announced for Japan, which includes an art book, a soundtrack with songs from previous Persona games, a series-inspired DLC, which I wonder what that is. It's going to be, like, is it going to be, like, actual story DLC? Is it just going to be, like, costumes or whatever? Um, uh, oh, well, it says including outfits of Persona 3 and 4, so it mm, probably has some story, because it's saying including outfits, so... If it's some story DLC bullshit, I'm going to be upset. Yeah, I hope... If, if it is story DLC, they better also release it, like, independently. <laughs> but, granted, they shouldn't do Day 1 DLC, because that's fucking retarded. Day 1 DLC is retarded. If, if um, something is developed before a game releases, it should yeah. be DLC. I don't have an issue with parts of DLC that come after release. If, if developers want to add to a game, sure. I have no mind. But don't freaking scam us with the whole... Uh, Day one DLC, the game that's yeah, it's fucking bullshit. Especially if it's pre-order bonus, it's like you have to pre-order the game to get this. I'm like, it's fucking. Yeah, no, I hate how these companies are do, companies are doing after. Don't even freaking get me started on Day Six. Yeah. You remember that, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah, your pre-order. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was it was absolute freaking scam. People scam ours, I tell you. Um, that's. This, that's what we're going to be talking about this episode. It's just what we know about Persona 5 and what we think about it. Yep. Which, as I say, I'm very excited for it. Yeah, yeah, uh, me too. Um, just to finish the, the Clutch Edition set, which uh, so far is for Japan, which hopefully they at least come out with one here. I imagine they will, but hopefully it's as good. Um uh, the, but the set in Japan is going to cost 13,800 yen, which is roughly $128 USD. Um, I'm guessing in the United States it's going to be like 100, maybe 80. Oh, uh, well, th- th- if, if it's going by the Japanese price, it's 128 USD. Yeah, but I mean, stuff is more expensive in Japan. Yeah. More expensive? I think it's usually cheaper. Well, I mean, if you're spending American dollars, but... Oh, oh. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on the thing, because 
I haven't like really looked at it myself, but I I've seen advertisements for like games in Japan, and they launch sometimes they launch for like eighty or a hundred U.S. dollars. I'm like, damn, how do they do that? Well, go look what happening with us in Canada right now. Eighty dollars for a standard new game. <laughs> I kid you not, like. It, Hey, at least and, and, it's, at least you're not Australia where it's like 120 for a game. Yeah, that's fucking retarded. Our dollar is so fucked up right now. Um, yeah, we have to pay basically 20 dollars more. Like, look, if you take a U.S. price at 20, whether it be collector's edition or standard edition, at 20 dollars, and that's a cane price. So it, it's absolute freaking criminal here. It's, it's like it's like oh a game's been out for a while now it's just sixty bucks woo twenty dollar price decrease at sixty woo fuck that oh it's like Witcher three now is like freaking only sixty dollars oh great instead of, uh, pisses me off well, does uh, your dollar have the same value as the American dollar no it went down like I said a dollar shit now. It's it's base it, it it changes every day but roughly the the average is probably around like for every American dollar it's seventy five cents here. Oh wow, that, that's terrible. It is terrible, yeah, it and trust me, as someone Australia. who as yeah, Australia is worse. We're just heading down Australia route, but Australia is a hell of a lot worse. I as someone who orders a lot from the U S, trust me, the conversion rate is killing my wallet. Oh, okay. cost me so much more. Um, okay, but, but yeah, the um, Clash Edition, hopefully we get a Western Clash Edition. Okay, but as I was saying, the stream, I didn't really watch it. Well, I, I watched the end of it because I remember getting up, I remember waking up at like 6 a.m. because my girlfriend kept spamming me with messages. She's like, John, get up, you gotta watch the stream. And I'm like, alright, fine. <laughs> so then... So then I started watching the stream, and then I got invited to this SNT Network group chat on Skype, and I talked to some of the people. That was pretty fun. But I actually, like, right when I tuned, turned on the stream, I saw the trailer. I saw the part of the trailer where they showed the release date. So I'm like, oh, yeah. It wasn't delayed. Yeah, no, uh, apparently, I'm not sure if this was was on the stream or not, but, there, but it was also announced that um, Persona uh, Persona 5 anime will premiere in Japan in September. The question Damn. is, is that going to be before or after the game comes out? It'd be kind of, it'd be kind of fun if they end up like, milking the game before it even comes out. <laughs> it's going to be Mighty Number no. 9 all over again. <laughs> yeah. Except not delayed as much, or maybe delayed more, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up yeah. with Mighty Number no. 9. Or, yeah, sorry, no, it's, I uh, have another example, but it's pretty bad. It's Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom. There was no. there was a TV show that's the TV show started airing before the game came out. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. It's I remember pretty just bad. getting up early in the morning one day, and I and I turned on the TV and I saw Sonic Boom. I'm like, holy shit, Sonic has another TV show. So I watched a bit of it. And it was like, oh, what happened to Knuckles? Knuckles, what they do to you? What was it? You know that you know that Sonic CD theme song where you hear like the female vocals say Sonic. It, was it Sonic Boom or was it Sonic something else? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was called Sonic Boom. Like the 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 uh, the Sonic CD like the old theme song, you know, the iconic theme song. I can't in my head. It's like I hear Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom. But I'm like, I'm like, is that just me getting like recent stuff confused with older stuff? But you know, what do you know? What do you know? Sonic CD predicted Sonic Boom. Yay! I <laughs> predicted a crappy game. Yeah. <laughs> That's, it was basically Sega's way of saying then, this is as good as it's going to get. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> no, it's... it's uh, Granted, I love the adventure game. Adventure games are the best. But, uh, yeah, no. I, I look, I'm look. i really looking forward to Persona 5. Hopefully the anime is good. Uh, I'm not sure if I asked this before. But was the Persona 4 Golden anime any good? I'm pretty. You asked this or was in the it, last episode, but did I? Did I? Damn. Okay, my mistake, people. But to answer your question, I haven't seen it myself, but 
everyone says it everyone says it's basically really short and they just did it to add Mari so it's not very good by itself but then again all the fans say oh it's just an addition to Persona 4 the animation which, yeah, because Persona 4 the animation wasn't that great, and it was way overpriced. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't like, sure if any, Golden was. Did gonna anybody be like... ask for that? Did anybody really say, "Hey, we need, no, we need no another anime it. so we can add Mari into it"? No one asked for Persona dancing all night. No one asked for. Uh, uh, no one asked for Ultimax. I don't think anyone did anyway. If he did, you, you suck because Ultimax had a retarded story. Um, so people stop being retarded and don't be careful what you wish for. Um, I suppose Serena was fine as on its own. Um, but yeah, no one asked. For, no one asked for a lot of the Persona form milking. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the trailer. Basically, yep. I, I'm not 100% sure what's going on in the trailer, but if I had to guess. It's like they go into some kind of digital world and they're kind of campaigning to steal stuff from pol- corrupt politicians and corrupt yeah. police and stuff. I noticed that they talked a bit. Um, assuming I got the context right, they've talked a bit about the trailer about some organized, some sound like some organization, most likely some shadowy. Uh, underground organization that apparently is, is threatening to several nations. I'm just like, whoa, okay, what scale the, What scale is this? Um, they, there's like, I think like a lot of it's probably going to be comprised of like corrupt people. Yeah. Um, they like show like, hood. yeah, like these guys are based like, the, the protagonists are basically seem to be like, um, yeah, Robin Hood vigilantes basically. Um, who are thieves to the legal system, but, you know, they're doing out justice in, in their own way sort of thing. Um, Maybe there's, like, some kind of conspiracy going on, and they're going against that. Yeah, well, and it, it had, like, you know, in the beginning, it had, like, the main character being interrogated by police and stuff like that, so maybe it's, like, the organization's basically sending the police after them, maybe? Um, that'll probably put them in a, in a tough tough spot Did they, I'm just going through I'm just going through the bit of the trailer right now it shows the main character walking through his Tokyo street and there's like a whole bunch of uh, sort of like not exactly detailed but like crowds of of people just walking around kind of like what they did with, in the in the Pokemon games in the big cities um, it seems to have is that the main character working at a um Working at a restaurant, so maybe it's like a new job, whatever. And that's probably going to be a social link. Yeah. Um, it seems, is this a casino? I'm just. Uh, um, second, I'm just waiting for the trailer. To, the graphics um, look really good, and so does the. Art. Yeah. Yeah, the graphics look really good. So right now I'm on trailer. I'm seeing there's like this casino. So yeah, probably some like maybe maybe they go against some like the more mafia types, and they have like this casino fat guy with like. Bug eyes and wings. Ten bucks, he's going to turn into Beezlebub. Beezlebub. Be- Beezlebub. Guarantee he's going to turn into Beezlebub. Uh, I'll be absolutely amazed if he doesn't turn into Beezlebub. But, uh... If he actually turns into, like, SMT's Beelzebub and not some redesign. I hope it's SMT Beezlebub, because SMT Beezlebub is, is awesome looking. Yeah. Um, I love SMT Beezlebub design. Changing a design like that's like trying to change Metatron. Like, no, you just don't do that. Um, it also and, 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 looks like there is going to be... Okay, based on the gameplay we saw, there is going to be new models because they showed Mithra in it. Yeah. Yeah, they... I can't... Was it confirmed a little... Wasn't it confirmed a little while ago that they're going to use demons, not shadows? Yeah. I, I It yeah. was actually shown in the trailer that came out in like January 2015 they mm. showed them fighting against a Sandman which I guess yeah it, 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 it wasn't a shadow but it was Sandman yeah it might have been so like basically they're going to... shadow kind of demon that you couldn't you recruit I mean it's persona you obviously can't recruit demons but you're actually yeah. fighting against the demons 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. They're going more demon route instead of the shadows. Which is good because I thought the shadows, I thought the designs for the shadows were just pretty lazy. I didn't mind. I found some of the designs for shadows were pretty good. However, but they recycled them like, all the time. Yeah, they recycled a lot of them, and I, and I kind of didn't. I'm like. Paramount wants to be able to use some of the shadows too, you know? It kind of sucks being able to fight against. It doesn't feel very SMT like fighting against them that you can't later on use. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, happy, I'm, I'm happy that they'll go uh, back of the more of the demon things. Uh, I know that there's looks like there's going to be a. Uh, oh, there's this one. F- French-looking character. She looks French. Her name's Adu. Uh, and there's a bikini scene. With some looks like some pool. So insert. It's got to be a fan service part. Th- there has to be a fan service part. It's either gonna be a bathhouse, it's gonna be a beach pool, or or whatever. A water park. Uh, it looks like a water, a water park. park. Yeah, there's gonna be something uh, where everyone's gonna be in bikinis and stuff. So, oh, is that New Year's celebration? Maybe. Um, well, that's another thing. Well, they they also showed more characters. Yeah, yeah. They they show this girl with, with way oversized glasses, which I'm like, I feel like she's gonna become a favorite maybe when she releases because of her. That's my girlfriend's favorite. Yeah. Um, that's probably because she looks like her, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Emily. Um, but, uh, is that the, are those new velvet room guards? They look small, like kids. Those, uh, those are the velvet room attendants. Or, t- sorry, attendants, whatever, but they were, they look like guards. Um. They're, maybe they're prison guards. I mean, the velvet yeah, room. Yeah, because there was, cause there was a guy behind and, yeah, it was like, was it the protagonist on that behind there? Yeah. Um. They haven't released all the information on all the characters, like what they're who who they are yet, are they? Have they? No, they haven't. Well, okay. I mean, if they have, I haven't been following it because I don't really want to spoil myself on that. I want to get to know the characters myself. Yeah, I I, I was not sure if they like released like you know this is what this character's name is or whatever. Um, I I know at the end, uh, Igor, if I remember correctly. Yep. Uh, Igor, he seemed to have. Maybe it's just my memory, but he seems creepier in the end of this trailer. Like his eyes seem more bulgy, and his big smile and his rounder head. Maybe, maybe he was like that in previous games. I can't remember, but I find he's a bit creepier in this one. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Um, it'd be kind of cool if they actually have like a, a like a, a a bonus boss we can actually fight against Igor. You know, that would be awesome. That would be pretty cool. Like he'd be like some ultra like powerful uh, user and stuff like that. You know, you have to be like top level to fight against him. That would be pretty cool. I mean, Persona Three Four optional. had that with Elizabeth and Margaret, but it would be even better if you could fight against Igor. Yeah, yeah, it was it was so cool to fight against Igor. So here's here's hoping they do that. Yeah. Here's I look that'd be super cool. But. Uh, yeah, it looks like um, they're going to have vigilante protagonists, corrupt uh, antagonists from the looks of it, be it politicians or mafia-related dudes. That's probably uh, going to have something to do with like the theme of the game. Like, you know how Persona 4 was kind of accepting your true self? Persona 5 yeah. is going to be about your slave, want emancipation, so it's probably going to have something to do with being controlled by the government. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and yeah, and and using staying in the shadows and fighting against fighting against the 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 higher corrupt powers. Um, I th- I imagine that's what's probably going to be more. What's probably going to be? What was Persona 3's, 3's overall theme again? I'm actually not sure. Yeah. Like I'm. It probably has some. Like but... Persona 4 was clearly your true self kind of. Thing thing, but I'm trying to think about like what back what Persona 3's was. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not I sure. Think, oh, I don't know what Persona 3's was. It was defying, it was defying the odds when they're against you. 
Oh, okay. Or in that case, in that case, it was death. But I'm pretty sure the message of the game was just to like just defy all odds when you're against you. Just don't yeah. give up, stuff like that. It didn't work too well. To pro- didn't work too well with the protagonist at the end of it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably pissed off with people saying that. But uh... but he did it to save the world. Yeah, well, if the whole uh, if this whole messiah thing pulls through, which is basically blatantly hinted with his with his uh, ultimate persona, literally being called Messiah, uh, he'll probably rise again. I am Jesus. I am Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Angry Joe reference. Yeah. Yep. Nostalgic critic reference. Well, it it would fit because the what was that guy, the hippie looking guy. At, uh, antagonist um what was his name again Takaya Takaya he was almost like a very Jesus. anti-Christ yeah that's what he, I was gonna say he was say. very so you know he's he, and for those no, anti-Christ is much like the Christ but except most, more like an evil mockery of it so that would be kind of cool if you know he was like the anti-Christ and, and if he was sort of like the anti-Christ figure and, and the protagonist is like the Christ figure <laughs> the Messiah so that, that, that that's pretty cool so I presume. I wonder. Will they ever tie in? Like, are they ever going to like really answer what happened? Like, resolve what happens? Like, resolve the Persona Three stuff with the with the main protagonist? Like, isn't that what they did with the FES? Uh, if I remember correctly, I don't think so. Not with the FES. I don't think. I don't remember him ever being revived or anything like that. Um, I remember there was like some hope for it, whatever, but. Grant, I haven't played the game in forever, so... I haven't played the FES. The only version I've played is portable. Well, I, I played yeah. half of FES, but I haven't actually beaten it. Yeah, I haven't played FES in forever, because so... The, the funny thing is, I started playing with FES, but then my file got corrupted for some unknown reason. And then after that, I was just I just started playing portable, because I didn't want that to happen again. You got corrupted? Yeah, I, and I don't know why. It might have had something to do with emulation on the PS3. But huh. I just, one day I just turned on the game and my file was gone. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, that would piss, me. That would piss anyone off. Uh, yeah, no, I, haven't, I never heard any corruption issues with Persona 3. Uh, but I was playing it on the PS3. I wasn't playing the physical version. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 uh, I, uh, I, I look, I, I wonder if they were gonna, if there's gonna be much references, I wonder how many references in Persona 5 there's gonna be of, like, Persona 4, because, or Persona 4 and 3. It's probably when you just remember... gonna be a couple of cameos. Yeah, probably gonna be a couple of cameos, I and then, like, I don't want them to just shoehorn in Persona 4 characters. Just to make yeah, I don't want him either. Yeah, because realistically, you know, the chance of them meeting like some, characters. Some people were saying that they wanted Nanako to be a main character in it. What really? Yeah. Because <laughs> he's older <laughs> now. And I'm like, they shouldn't do that. How, what's it? What's the What's the year difference bet- okay. between? Well, all the Persona games have taken place about three years into the future when they come out. Well, she'd still be too young, wouldn't she? For well, okay, she won't be a teenager. It's 2016, so assuming it come, assuming it takes place in 2019, Persona 4 takes place in 2012. She was seven. No, no, no. Persona 4 takes place in 2011, and she was seven then. So in 2019, three years later, she would be, she'd be 15. Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't Persona 5, won't Persona 5 take place three years after Persona 4? No, no, no. I'm saying it takes place three years after it comes out. Like three years oh, in the future. Oh, oh. Persona 4. Oh, yeah, that's right. Persona 4 takes place in two... Hold on, I'm looking this up. Okay, so yeah, Persona 4 came out in 2008 and it came out and it it took place in 2011 so persona 3 came out in 2006 took place in 2009 so persona 
5 is probably going to take place in 2019. Yeah. Or 2020, maybe. Well, I, if she was a teenager and wasn't so much in the whole Big Brother thing anymore, then I think it would be kind of cool having her as, as a character. Uh, not a main character. Like, not like the main character. Or, or, but it, it would be... I don't think they would because we haven't seen anything of her in Persona 5. I hide that they're going to just add another character and be like, oh, yes, by the way, this is Anna. She might make a cameo, but... I don't think she's going to be a main character. But like, if we if we went back in time and they had they were still like debating what characters to add and whatever, I I think it would be kind of cool if they had you know an actual teenager uh, Nanako, and she be she probably has some like wisdom with some of this stuff because she'd already experienced some of this crap before, so she might you know be help to the team. But um, yeah, yeah, they summon personas differently. Like, this this whole game is different. Like, okay, Persona 3, you were kind of exploring this tower. Persona 4, you were going into a TV world here. I'm guessing it's a kind of digital world. Yeah, it looks digital because there's one scene where there looks like they're fighting against a boss. And I'm assuming I've interpreted it correctly. It seemed like it had, like, a the boss was almost controlled by some person on on the computer yeah, screen yeah, no, or whatever. No, and she's like, take they this. Showed, they showed the girl with glasses, and she was kind of yeah. like giving them support. She's like, hey, oh, okay. um, what you whatever your name is, can you hack it? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to hack it. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, maybe that's it. So, I yeah, the trailer they... with subtitles. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, the, it looks like, yeah, this game is going to be computer, digital world. I don't know if it's going to be like a, like a whole like porn dungeon, because that's like a huge chunk of the internet. <laughs> And and high dungeon. <laughs> Hello Kitty Love Hotel Rooms. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a deep web dungeon. Deep web oh that would be so cool. Please make it happen, Atlas. Please make it happen. Please. That would be so cool. And have like and have like as like one of the last dungeons, you know, like the deep web, you know, beyond everything else. Uh, that would be so cool. That would also be pretty disturbing. Yeah, have like all like have like the most yeah disturbing crap. Have, have like real, have, have tons like, of like Maras walking around. <laughs> make make the enemies be like cannibals and drug dealers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 crazy stuff. That would be so cool. Or have like have like moments or things just pop out on the screen to jump scare you. That would be so freaking awesome. <laughs> It would be so... Yeah. Please make Deep Web happen, Atlas. Please make it happen. Please. But honestly, if they, if they want to go by, like, what, what's big on the internet, porn has to be at least one dungeon, because that's what most of the internet... A huge chunk of the internet is. The internet's for porn. The internet's for porn. That was, there's actually... A, that's actually a dialogue choice you can choose in Persona 2 when negotiating with <laughs> Like, a demon will ask you, what is computers, what are they used for? And one of the answers is for porn. <laughs> Just grab your dick and double-click for porn, porn, porn. Yeah, no, it's... I mean, they had a strip club dungeon in Persona 4. You know, what's, what's so... What's wrong with having, like, Red Tube or Pornhub dungeon? <laughs> they also have to avoid the AO rating, you know. <laughs> well, they just made things less subtle. I mean, I mean, they did the. It's not like you had. A, it's not like the Persona Four strip club dungeon was full of pimps and women walking around bare without wearing any shirts, dancing on poles. You just, you know, add some stylish to imply what's what's actually based on. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I suppose it would. And it is a bit more realistic towards what the internet entails. Uh, they probably won't do it though, but who knows? It's and Japan. Then, who knows? And then they should have, they should have an SNT network dungeon that's just a bunch of people fighting you over stupid things like your waifu <laughs> or playing a real Shin Megumi Tensei. Yeah, yeah. Or you're no. a weeboo if you like Persona Four. 
Hearing hearing any Persona Three fan call Persona Four a fan of Weibo because I like Persona Four is just downright laughable. <laughs> Bro, I've, I've seen I've seen I'm talking about SMT Elite is like they'll say you're a Weibo if you like Persona Three or Persona Four. Well, they're right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fuck you. you <laughs> hey, you, you started trip. with Persona and you think Persona Four is better than Persona Three? I'm kidding. I love Persona Four. Uh, Persona 3 is good, but it's overrated, and I pissed off a lot of people probably just saying that. Gameplay is retarded a bit at times, uh, but we I, covered this before. Yeah, we talked about this before, I talked about why I actually like Tartarus. I hate Tartarus. So. Okay, I like Tartarus because the dungeon crawling is kind of shallow, but it, it's different every time. It's, it's like the Pokemon Mystery but, Dungeon games. But, I mean, yeah, but I mean, like... The, another game I played, uh, I can't believe I, I platinum. That probably says some really Conception bad about me. Two. Conception two. I play literally platinum the game because I did it because I was told it was easy. Uh, they didn't tell me it was going to take some freaking fifty some hours to freaking platinum it. But so basically, I played the hell of the game. I saw every scene because I, I had to unlock to unlock some trophies and unlock a trophy or whatever. So I played. I basically did everything you could in that game. But one of the things in the game is that every time you go into a dungeon. The dungeons basically look more or less the same, but every time you enter it, every floor is a different layout. Uh, much like the Mystery Dungeon games. And you know what? That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean Persona. I'm sorry, Conception 2's game is really good. It's not. But I mean, I, I'm not against that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against the, the fact that you can dungeons and random acts. I freaking love the Mystery Dungeon games. Love it. But wasn't Persona 4's dungeons like that too, mostly? No, they were actually set dungeons. Were they? Yeah. Well, that's the I, thing. I, remember, I thought there were set floors, but I didn't think there was like actual... Uh, no, they were. could have swore they were, were some the like... every time you went there. Really? Like, there would be different enemies and treasures each time, but the layout was... Oh, uh, maybe same. that's what I'm thinking of. The treasures. See, Persona 3, I liked that because basically... It, it meant grinding never got old, especially if you'd go when Fuka would say Tartarus was unstable. Then you get stuff like all golden hand floors, all super strong enemy floors, floors with a bunch of treasure chests that had a bunch of yen, stuff like that. It, ma- it, it would have been if Tartarus wasn't like, if it, if it actually looked good and it didn't have crappy music. You it know? actually made grinding fun. Well, I found it like it might have been better if, if, if it wasn't actually such a dull dungeon. <laughs> Well, I, I think the design I, of the dungeon is pretty meh, but oh yeah, does it ever? And the music is just like, ugh. um, grind. I don't find I don't find Persona games requires much grinding as SMT games. Well, I, I yeah, also, cause, I cause also thought the grinding in Persona no, Four Golden was fun because it had a golden because Golden had that shuffle time thing with the cards. And you could always get these different combinations and stuff. That was fun. That made grinding fun. After playing a game like DDS2 and 1 2 as well, uh, and DDS1, um, grinding, and even uh, some Rido games, because some of the Rido games can be pretty brutal with grinding. Um, grinding in Persona is just so easy for me now, because it's, it's kind of like once you play some of the harder XMT games. And you have, and you really have to grind these games hardcore, man. Especially Digital Devil Saga. Holy shit, yeah, grind hard. Um, especially if you want to go against like any optional bosses at the end. Holy crap. Um, yeah, it's, I can't, I I can't play a to someone who's new to Persona, new to SMT and stuff like that, they might find the games are harder, more of a challenge. But once you play some of the harder and beat some of the harder SMT games, all the other ones are just super easy. <laughs> Including Persona. I, I could play through Persona no problem now. Not super easy, I find, for me now. Well, Persona probably is or it is the easiest SMT games. Like, both yeah. Persona 3 and 4. Yeah, Persona 3 and 4. And even Pers- I haven't played Persona 1, but Persona 2 was also pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't played Persona 1 either. Um, yeah. But I'm hoping, okay, as far as dungeon crawling goes for Persona 5, I hope it has bigger dungeons. 
because yeah. like Nocturne, I personally think Nocturne is a bit overrated, but it the game it had is. great dungeons. It did. Yeah. If Persona Five has the dungeons of Nocturne, then it's probably gonna be the best that's it's probably gonna be the best Persona game. Yeah, yeah. Nocturne had a lot of flaws and it was alright, but it did one thing it did undeniably have was great dungeons. And I just I also like the environment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanna it would kinda of cool to see how much will they add stuff sort of add things into the dungeons to make things more just show that it's on the air to make things more digital, more kinda of cool. I, I don't know if they will. Um Well they showed some of that in the trailer. Yeah. Would it be kinda of cool if there's there's like one dungeon where you get you literally get like ad blocks on your screen or something like that. Oh, that'll be funny. That would be kinda of cool. I mean that that I mean I know it's I know it's more like M or at least ad blocks, you know, if they don't want to go with the whole mail gear break the fourth wall style, they could just have like, you know, ad blocks blocking the pathway and the characters have to like smash the ads or whatever. <laughs> Copyright claims. <laughs> Content smash. ID. That would be YouTube dungeon, that would be awesome. That would be awesome, man. <laughs> And you have people who are be... like, oh, don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, don't forget <laughs> to leave a like again. And uh, my subscribe channel is brought it. to you by this person. Yeah. Yeah, no, it would be kind of cool. Uh, if they're, if they're going to take place in, like, digital internet stuff, I, I ho- kind of hope there's going to be actual things in the game that relate to... The the inter- internet, you know, the web. I kind of hope there'll be some of that in the game. Um, what do you think the dungeons are going to be? Because Persona 4 dungeons were basically all about, like, um, were all about people, like, you're, you went in each dungeon, each dungeon is basically the inner, uh, inner feelings of whatever character it is at the, at, at the time. What do you think Persona 5's dungeons are going to be based on? Is this gonna be like a common theme? I I don't know. I think it I think it might just be the guy that's at the end because they showed in the trailer they showed these people a kind of this room that was kind of like a dead end. So I'm guessing that's at the end of the dungeon. Mm, yeah. Um. I, I actually I have, honestly have no idea. Yeah, I, uh, it'll be super interesting. They said Persona 5 is going to be at E3, if I remember correctly. Um, is it going to be in English? If it's E3, then probably yeah. Yeah. I doubt they're going to have, like, at least subtitles uh, for everything in, in uh, E3. They're not going to sure have, like, the Japanese only. Be, I'm sure a bunch of people are going to be importing the game from Japan, but I'm not going to do that because if I'm playing yeah. the game, I want to know exactly what's going on. Yeah, ex- exactly. I can understand what someone's doing. If, they, they, if someone just wants like a collector's edition from Japan, they just want to buy it for just for that, and then later on buy the English game. Or if you can speak Japanese, which I can't. Or if you can speak Japanese, which I, I can't. I may be a um, weeb, but even I'm not going to pretend to know Japanese when I don't. <laughs> Still a lot of the people think they can learn Japanese from watching sub... <laughs> Like I took I took Japanese classes for two years and even I even now I still barely know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, people. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know Japanese. I probably won't ever know Japanese. I I mean, who knows in the future? But I probably won't unless I take some sort of class and decide to go to Japan for whatever reason. I'd, um, that's probably the only reason why I'll learn Japanese, but... I mean, to be honest, that's that's kind of one of the reasons I stopped. It's because I was learning Japanese in my class, but I wasn't really using it outside. Yeah. Like, maybe yeah. if I was taking college in Japan, I would do it, but I, I as much as I want to do that, I'm probably not going to be able to. Yeah. Realistically, I don't think I'll probably go to Japan, but if I ever do, yeah, I might. I might take up Japanese then, but or at least try to take up and learn it, but uh, yeah. Anime does not teach you how to speak 
Japanese. Don't fool yourselves. Don't don't be a weeb. Be smart, not a weeb. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, any other things you have to say about Persona 5? Any other speculation? I'm just going on the Wikipedia page of Persona 5. Um, I, I probably read this before, but I, by the way, I forgot it. Um, story on the plot section says the story focuses on the 16 year old protagonist after he's transferred to fictional Shujin High School in Tokyo. Staying as friends of, staying with friends of his parents, he meets up with a problem child, Ryuji Sakamoto, and with John at Takamake, art student Yosuke, Yosuke? Another one? Kitagawa. And a talking shapeshifting cat creature known as Morgana. I think of Morgan when I hear that name. Um, during the protagonist's time there, fe- feeling suppressed by their environment, the five group five form a group known as Phantom Thieves of Hearts. Ooh, is that maybe the casino? You know, Hearts. You know, cards. You know, maybe. maybe. Mm-hmm. Working together to explore a world known as quote Palace. A world that lies within the hearts of the corrupted targets the cast faces. Oh, okay, maybe. Driving this quest, they confront adult authority figures opposing them, along with a greater enemy revealed by their activities. So maybe, like, for the casino guy, they go in, like, a casino-style dungeon, because that's, like, the... That's going to be awesome. That's going to be I love casino areas and dungeons and stuff in games. It's going to be, like, Sonic. Yeah, well, wait, Sega know. owns Atlas now, so they're going to include yeah. putting some Sonic in there. Yeah, put some Sonic, put some like Sonic um, uh, machines and stuff like that. Pachinko Sonic machines. Maybe a cameo. <laughs> if they want to be really faithful to the real world, just put some like Konami Pachinko machines in there. <laughs> Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that'll be pretty cool. Um... But yeah, that's a pretty cool uh, concept. Um, okay. Yeah, that's basically what I know about the about the. Uh, oh, what's what's this? My characters are fiend with three faces. Don't spoil any of the characters, please. Well, it's not really a spoiler if you say the name of a character. Well, I'm, I'm talking that's about a pretty, like that's a pretty story. bad spoiler. Because, uh, like I said, I remember after the third trailer for Persona 5 came out, they started releasing some news, and they were like, this character is this, and there's this about her, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to read this. <laughs> uh, that sense of against spoilers, eh? I don't mind any spoilers like anything like that, because all that stuff is like you find out the first ten minutes of the game anyway. Um, but you know they don't have anything. They don't three have any years from this game. I don't want to spoil myself on anything. You know, no, fair enough. I won't spoil it on you. You know, the main enemy is Igor. Not just kidding. That's great. <laughs> That'd be awesome, though. I, here's hoping that we can fight Igor in a game. That would be like um, the best plot twist ever if Igor was a villain. Oh yeah. And like the final dungeon is like the velvet is a velvet room dungeon. That'd be super cool. Um, man, house. I hope you do that just so we can come back and say we told you so, people. We told you so. <laughs> that would be so awesome if they did that. So just so I could go back and say, ha ha, people we told you so. Long before the game ever came out, we're freaking smart. Um, but yeah, that's all I know about. Persona 4. Uh, s- s- sorry, Persona 5. So, I figured I might as well talk about the Collector's Edition now. Right now, I'm looking at the Persona... I'm looking at the basic information on the Persona Central page, and they got, like, figures and stuff. They're kind of cute, but I don't think I'm going to be... For part of the collector's edition? I didn't see that in the IGM. Yeah, no, but... Well, they they have the collector's edition on here, but they also have figures. But it's oh, different. okay. It's oh, like, okay. Yeah, the figures look cute, but I'm not going to be spending a shit ton of money on them. 
can't believe how much merchandise. So even I, every time I go to a convention, there's like tons of some merchandise. But yeah, maybe if I see one at a convention, I'll get it. But I'm not gonna I'll be come like, to come to Halicon this year, and you'll probably see some. And I'm uh, not gonna be masturbating on it either. Yeah, whenever people get like really sexual toy like figurines or whatever, I'm just like. Are you going to put that on your shelf for when people come over to your house and see it? Like, what do you do with it? Hiding in your closet? <laughs> and, like, why would you masturbate on it? If you spent that much money on it, Would why would you want to ruin it with your semen? But that we're kind Just of go out. If, if you're really that desperate for some puss-puss, then just go out and buy one of those fake vagina sex toy things that they exist out there. All right, well, okay, now I'm looking at the collector's edition, and comes with the game. It's showing me the box, and it also comes with a soundtrack for all five Persona games, not just Persona 3 and 4. And yeah. it also comes with an art book. So, what the fuck? This website has a set section on Tokyo Mirage. Fuck that. <laughs> I thought it said it's supposed to be Persona Central, not Retarded Central. Just say. Um, what are you looking at? What are you looking at the statues? I can't. I, I'm on the website Persona Central and Persona Five. I can't find it. It's bit, the title. of The article is Persona Five from Mitsu DX. Pack oh, okay. I just launched. literally saw that. Okay. And then it shows a cute figure of the protagonist in Morgana. I wasn't really a huge. I'm not really a huge fan to like chibi figurines. To be honest, I don't have any of them. I have a lot of other stuff though. I have a lot of mecha stuff. I have a lot of you know, uh, gunpa is it called? Um, a lot of stuff like that, and a lot of other anime statues and stuff like that. But nothing like chibi chibi. Not my thing. Um. Oh, but that's another thing I wanted to mention. In the stream, at, sometime after the trailer was shown, they actually did, like, a little history feature right thing, and they actually mentioned Persona 1 and 2. They showed Persona 1 and 2 on there. Oh, did they? Yeah. Huh. Because I remember in 2013... Before they announced they, they before they announced Persona 5, they did something like that. They didn't even mention Persona 1 or 2, but here they actually yeah. did. Yeah. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Is Morgana going to be like the new Teddy, like the Persona 5's Teddy? Yes. Yeah. I am 99.9% uh -huh. sure he's going to be the new Teddy. What would, what would be Persona 3's version, I, I guess? I, I guess that's the closest thing. Closest thing? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, okay. What's the Shin Megami Tensei Launch Edition? Sh uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse Launch Edition Details. Uh, for pre order launch edition bonus, the game. Dagda, the God of Richard's protagonist, for some literally is a market. So far, market. that's only in Japan. I mean, even, even this. Uh, no, of... this one, this one's actually, uh, Western. Oh, really? Local. Yeah, Atlas USA have detailed the pre-order launch edition bonuses for the game in North America. Mm. Um, looks like it's just metal uh, metal pins of peace and anarchy. And not as good as, not as, good as the Persona 4... Uh, Sonic, pff, Shin Megami Tensei 4 is launch edition. No. Not near as good. Not near as good. It came with it came with like a little mini guidebook and a CD, which wasn't very good, but the guidebook. Was but nice. still, <laughs> yeah, the guidebook was nice. You know, uh, that's a good info in there. Um, but I'm really hoping that it says the Persona Five Collector's Anniversary Edition comes with DLC, and I I really hope that's just cosmetics well looking at it it looks like it is just going to be cosmetics but I hope Persona 5 doesn't do any of that pre-order bullshit like I mentioned earlier yeah yeah no 
I, I, I don't... I hope they don't do anything shady, really shitty for that, anything like that, you know? I mean, Japanese companies usually aren't as bad with that, but they're still yeah, kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, here's hoping that they haven't took any hints from uh, the EA. companies over here, EA and UB One and all that. Activision. I find that's, that's actually, actually this isn't really related to SMT, but one thing I wanted to talk about is most of you have probably seen oh, the yeah. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer. And they've, Bell. They've yeah. announced a remastered version of Call of Duty 4, but you have to pre order the deluxe version of Infinite Warfare to get it. Yeah, that's fucking retarded. It's stupid. I, I feel like they won't I feel like they won't keep it permanent. I, I really they're not gonna I really, I really don't think they're going to um, keep it like you won't ever be able to get the game ever because I guarantee probably within like a year after Infinite Warfare comes out they'll probably release it on like the e store or something like that. But and the, still, what happens if they don't? Like that's the thing. Because that's what the f- are you just going to lose your chance to play a remastered Call of Duty forever? You know, I mean, it's freaking retarded. Yeah, it, it's bad because now not as many people are going to get it. They're not. They're not gonna get the. They're not gonna want to pay eighty dollars to get Modern Warfare remastered. Well, so, my biggest worry is that most people will, and I, and I and I hope they don't put any like limit on how many copies they're gonna make of it. Because can you imagine if it sells out within the first month of it going pre-orders, like which is in, like early in the year? And yeah. after everyone has, and everyone after that's like, oh, too bad you're never gonna play. You're never gonna play. Um, Remastered Modern Warfare. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is what Call of Duty fans have been asking for. They've they've been asking for remastered versions of the older COD games, but now Infinity Ward is like, hey, if you want to play the remastered older COD games, you have to get Infinite Warfare. Yeah. Personally, I'd rather have Modern Warfare 2 remastered, but everyone seems to think Modern Warfare 1 is better, so, you know. I... I, I... Uh, I I uh, I'd probably prefer a Modern Warfare One remaster simply because I think you know Modern Warfare Two and and Three look better than Modern Warfare One, so I think it needs the remaster yeah, but, the most. Well, I I don't think people but, really care about the graphics that much. I think it's the community. Like now, yeah. Modern Warfare One, Two, and Three are just are just hacker. They're they're full of hackers, and there's hardly anybody playing. Yeah, yeah. Whenever if, it's COD, if they remaster, if they on. remaster the game and re-release it again. It's going, it's going to motivate people to play the game again. Pe- people are basically they gonna be playing the game again. Better not include that perk, Mardo. <laughs> they better not thing. fucking include that. I'll be pissed if they do. <laughs> Cheapest fucking perk ever. I know. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was terrible. Um. <laughs> When, has they, have they announced the actual date for Shimagami Tensei 4 Apocalypse yet? I think it's sometime in June. Hold on. Uh, right here I'm saying summer's 2016, but I was wondering if it's going to be like August, or is it going to be July? Or... Well, Atlas USA E3 2016 booth to feature Persona 5 and Shimagami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. So hopefully we'll get more info on those at E3. <laughs> it's like a, so I, I have to read this. Uh, I was just on. I just saw a side article. Uh, new Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag Fe, which is such a fucking stupid name. Videos reveal swimsuit scene localization change. Ooh, that's going to cause them some anger among fans. Well, so once. What do you expect? Hmm? I mean, Nintendo has always been really bad with localizing stuff. But this is a Nintendo for Persona 5. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, it is. Sorry, shit. Yeah, it is. I forgot about that. Yeah, this is Nintendo. Uh, I mean, they took out Navi trackers from Four Swords Adventures, and they didn't say why. What was Navi trackers? <laughs> it, it was like this little mini game where I, I, I can't remember exactly how it played. I think it was like these characters control a navy or something and they're like going through a maze but it but regardless it was a mode that was in four swords adventures but they took it out of the english version and they didn't say why wow. huh 
I'm just looking at the photos of the localization changes in, in Tokyo massage sessions. It seems like actually quite heavy censorship, to be honest. Like, any... What's the point of trying to censor, like, freaking bikinis? Like, I, I, if it was, like, a, like one of those... If it, if it, if it was one of those, um, um, like, really skimpy underwear, bikini things that really, really show things, like, basically more or less just a string sort of thing, I can understand that for Nintendo. But, I mean, come on. It's fucking... You, you go to a beach, and there's fucking tons of women, skinny, fat, whatever you... Wearing the exact same thing, and kids are always going to the beach every summer. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna become twisted sociopaths when they see all this stuff. Fuck that. This is actually quite bad. Yeah, anyone in this game who wears a bikini or anything like that is basically like fully covered up in like clothing now. Oh, that's so fucking and t-shirt and everything. Yeah, well, this is 2016. We live in a world run by social justice warriors. Yeah, fucking SJWs. I mean, uh, there are social justice warriors complaining about there being too many white people in The Witcher 3. Yeah, that's so fucking stupid. It's like, the game takes place in, in like, ancient Poland. That's well, like... it, it takes place in a fantasy universe, but it's based on Poland. Yeah. <laughs> It's made by Polish developers based in Poland. Uh, I mean, it's, based it's off almost, Poland, I mean. It's almost like semi fantasy, semi historical. Yeah, it's it's very it's kind of like Game of Thrones in the sense that it's it's not like your typical high fantasy universe. It's very much uh, with it's a lot his, of historical. It's like historical, but there's a lot of mythology thrown in. It, yeah, it's based on Poland. It reminds me. It's based on Polish mythology. That's the best yeah, way to describe it. Witcher, the style of Witcher is like that of Game of Thrones. Uh, and if you've seen, if you like Game of Thrones in the way it does it, you know, how it handles its fantasy and stuff like that, how it feels like more like a historic, even though it's fantasy made up, it feels like an actual historical show, gives out that kind of feeling, then you'd, then you'd like The Witcher and vice versa. Uh, but yeah, the SJWs would, uh, what was that game that got banned? Banned, uh, basically got not officially banned, but they got the developers to not localize over here. Was it Dead Alive Dead one? Dead Alive Ultimate. I mean, Dead Alive Extreme 3. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know if the social justice wars were actually doing anything, but Bandai Namco, when, when somebody asked if they were going to bring it over here, they said, no, do you have any idea how much controversy that's going to stir up or something like that? Yeah. And, I mean, p complaining about there being too many white people in The Witcher 3 is like me complaining about there not being enough white people in Onimusha. I mean, it's like, it's set in Japan's feudal period. The, the nearest white people are probably hundreds of miles away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty stupid. Um, by the way, you know, SJWs, they fuck everything up. Oh, they are the most... I, I I love watching Sargon of Akkad ripped into pieces on YouTube. I mean, it is hell. Even th there was this recent thing that Alpha Omega Sin talked about. It, it was basically oh, was, the, was it the diversity course? Yeah, a university. They were having some kind of panel about video games or something, and it got canceled, or it was either canceled or delayed because all the people participating were men. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, it wasn't. A, it, yeah, if I remember correctly, it wasn't about diversity, but the universe was like, "There's not enough diversity." In I know it. it's stupid. That is so funny. Okay, people, let's keep this simple. Things should be judged based on their merit. People should be based on their merit, what they do, uh, not on who they bang at night. Who, what color their skin is? The fact that all these companies now, gaming companies and other industries, uh, it's becoming big in movies with Marvel Universe now. They're pandering now towards like LGBT, include basically pandering to bring and be more inclusive and diverse. No, who? Stop bringing in things that have nothing to do with the original concept just to fit some sort of social justice quota uh, and agenda 
And yeah, they're, they're just shoehorning in things to satisfy the SJWs. Yeah, and you know what? That is that is terrible. And to us who don't like SJWs and don't like seeing this shit, and, and we try to go the video games for escapism, they're basically they're basically bringing their politics into into a series that we love. And most it, of them it, most of them don't even play video games. Yeah, exactly. Most of them, it's like Andy Sarkeesian talking about families of video games when she doesn't fucking play video games. Yeah, she she steals too. channel footage from other people's channels who do play video games. Um, and the GTA that's the thing with the comments and ratings. Yeah, yeah, guilty as charged. <laughs> it, 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 misogynist it's... sexual harassment. Oh, they call me a mean name. Oh, I've been harassed. She, she, she literally went ending. to Google and the UN and asked them to ban her critics. Yeah, that's fucking disgusting. How that how that would be that the, the UN right there should have tore a strip out of her. Um, Larry tore a strip out of her, ridiculed her for even suggesting to try to take away freedom of speech, freedom of exp- – damn, this country's – U.S., Canada, we're worse than you guys are right now. You, you guys are hanging down our path right now, but things are going to hell over here um, with all this pandering, all this social justice bullshit, which is infecting gaming now. Frig. Um – it's, it's getting r- downright ridiculous. It would be one thing if, it, if if only a little bit was affected by it, but it's becoming it's like a huge thing now, you know? Yeah. Um, and we don't want to see Persona affected by it. <laughs> no, we don't. Can you, uh, can you imagine how pissed people would be if they, like, if they, like, if Persona 5 came out and all the, all, like, the, the beach water park themes, they were all, they... They took them out or heavily censored everything. Oh, that would be – that would cause so much outrage. I mean, I don't know if I talked about this before, but one of the reasons I was afraid that Final wasn't going to get localized was because, well, Chris, who – he was the guy who was giving me all the information on the story and stuff. He said that there was some controversy among – like there were Hindus that were mad at it because it featured. Yeah, God Alpha Omega Sin actually did a video on it. Yeah, some some Hindus in India were pissed at their Hindu gods in it. It's like it's uh, fiction. Get over yeah, it. Yeah, it's fiction, guys. Like I'm. If you don't if you don't like it, don't buy it. Don't vote with your wallet. Don't you know? I don't. I, there's never been a time in my life where I've ever felt that someone could create a game that, that literally mocks and attacks everything I value, and I would not be the slightest tempted to say, oh, well, that game shouldn't exist, or that game should be able to play or for sale, or they should change it, or whatever. No, fuck that. If people want I just won't buy it. It's so simple. Like, I'm, like, you know that Jeff and I are both Christians, but... I don't really get offended if I see Jesus in a work of fiction or something. Like, there's this one part, in, there was this one scene in this one episode of South Park where Kyle stabs Jesus with a shiv. I didn't get offended by that because I don't care. It's fiction. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't care about that either. My faith is strong enough that I'm not going to get... I'm not going to have a crisis of faith because uh, a cartoon or whatever makes fun of Jesus or anything like that. That doesn't... Screw that. <laughs> and yet... And you know what? I'm all for open discussion. I'm all for intellectual diversity, which seems to be completely absent in academia now, completely absent in society now. You dare say anything contrary to the status quo, you're entitled a bigot or whatever, which is ironic, considering that the definition of bigot, you're actually being bigoted if you're using that against someone. But people don't care about definition. They don't care about... Facts. They don't care about logic. People, people will believe their bullshit and tell themselves at night. And but when it turns against them, oh, that's when they cry. Yeah. They're, One day they're all for freedom of speech until they yeah. realize that people have different opinions. Yeah. You you have the freedom to say what you want to say unless it offends me or I don't agree with it. <laughs> and if and if I don't agree with it or I'm offended by it, I'll censor you. I'll send you, or I'll, I'll, I'll take you to, I'll get the UCLA to, 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 uh, co- to uh, file you under hate speech or something like that. Some bullshit like that. But here's hoping I never, I mean, it looks like they're already doing some of it with Nintendo with, Nintendo's done, 
I don't think it, the tail doesn't really do it. Enough. I don't think SJW stuff. I think they didn't move to it because that child child friendly stuff. I, st- um, I still don't know why they took out Navi trackers. I yeah. Mean, the the uh, only reason I can actually think of is because Tetra, she was in it. She was voice acted, but what I say to that is just mute the sound if you really don't want to voice act. Yeah, it's it, it's um. It's a shame that took him a massage setting, uh, sessions, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, um, it's being censored, which really sucks. Ooh, wait, 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 there's... There's also, that waifu, there's also that waifu petting game from Fire Emblem. Oh, yeah. Which I've heard actually had impact on the gameplay, so I don't know, I don't know how to feel about that. Didn't they, didn't they, didn't they, um... Censor or change something in, in in the latest Fire Emblem, some dude with like censoring a uh, sex change because it might affect transsexuals or something like that, ridiculous like that. I don't know about that. I know they censored some of the pictures in the DLC. Yeah, I know that, but I think there was like something where someone want some character someone want to be like the other sex, and they had like some potion that you could take, or whatever, and they're like, oh, that's transphobic. We're not fuck that. Keep grow. Grow a pair of balls or whatever, no pun intended. If if someone if you get fed over it, something like that, like calm the fuck on. You know, well, t- to be fair, I think one of the, a lot of the reasons they censored some of the art in Fire Emblem, like like that picture of Tharja's ass that they showed in the DLC. I think the reason they censored that was because they wanted to avoid the M rating. Yeah, if if it's to avoid. Granted, I, I think our ESRB should be crucified about how inaccurate it is. Oh, don't even get, I could do it an entire episode. I could do an entire episode I know episode you on that. could. I'll just say this. There is no way in hell you can logically tell me that you have to be fucking 17 years old, literally one year from being a legal adult, in order to see some skimpy girl's butt. That is fucking ridiculous. Ugh. I mean... I've seen PG-13 movies with worse content than M. I know, I know, exactly, yeah. Ugh, fucking. It's I wonder, like, I, I imagine Japan's censored board's probably a lot better given <laughs> given uh, the stuff that they release over there. Yeah. Every, else, everything would be like freaking like M and adult rated if they, if they act like the ESRB. Freaking, I mean, uh... And, and the thing is, they... They seem to enforce it more than they do with any other rating system. Like, like I have a collection of about 100 movies in my room. At least 75% of them are rated R, and I was never asked for an ID check once, ever. But when you buy yeah. an M-rated game, you always have to show your ID. I know, that's... that's that's. Sometimes I go to even games, and, you know, I'll have I'll have my full face, I'll look a bit older, and they ask me for my ID, I'm like, Really, guys? Really? And the thing is, if the ESRB saw some of the movies in there, they would probably faint oh, fuck because of how see. bad they are. Like, inter- like I mean, I mean, they're good. I love how in Japan, like literally the only thing, like you could go into, uh, you can go into uh, shops, and the only thing that really, uh, you, you any kid could, uh, the only thing that protects people from adult materials, just this sign saying eighteen only. <laughs> Kids could theoretically walk in and start looking at <laughs> end time magazines. Gajigubu was saying, Tama, uh, not a huge fan of him, but he was showing some stuff of that, and I was like, oh, that's pretty funny how kids could just theoretically walk into a store and go to the 18 only section when the clerk's not looking and see a whole bunch of titties or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here's like, you know, here's like uh, the, the adult section. The store has to be like, if there's anything adult, it has to be like anything. It has to be like a specific, special, adult only store with the windows blocked and you know, covering covered up, so no kids could just look in and see a bunch of titties or whatever. It's a huge thing out west, but Grandma, I think I'm not sure how Japan is with violence. Are they like more more censored with violence than we are? I don't know. I'm not sure actually. I know Europe is more censored with violence. Like here, we think. Here, <laughs> violence is okay, but sex isn't in Europe. It's like sex is okay, but violence isn't. Yeah. Which I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure how I feel about either one. 
I mean, t to be honest, I don't really think a couple, like, a young couple having sex is a f as offensive as, like, splitting a guy's head open with a crowbar and w watching blood spray all over your screen. I would rather... Uh, I would, if I was a parent, I would rather. I don't want my young kids watching anything sexual. I'd rather them, I'd rather them see them, them see violence than sex, sexual stuff. Because I find that, I find the violence stuff is more superficial. Like no one watches a violent movie. Okay, sorry, I should say no one. Most people, vast majority of people, don't watch a violent movie or play a violent video game and say. Oh geez, I want to go act this out now. I have the urge to do this now, but I don't want like my 12 year old kid start wanking off after he if he sees some um, movie that has a lot of sexual uh, sexual stuff in it because you know well, if if he watches a, a movie with sexual stuff in it in an early age, he's probably not gonna know what the fuck is going on. He's probably gonna be confused. Well, at like at, at like a. I'm, Pre-teen stuff, he'll, he might have a better idea. I don't think anything younger yet. He's gonna be confused. Um, but I can understand a little bit of it. But granted, I don't think I think the ESPs are tired because I think once you reach like fourteen, fifteen, <laughs> there's not a whole lot that things should be censored at all. Um, well, the thing is, the ESRB will give pretty much anything an M rating. It's like it's got blood, give it an M rating. It's got guns, give it an M rating. Oh, I remember, I remember, that, I remember uh, Damn, it's him writing strong language. Strong language. Fuck, that's... Ugh. Like, it, do, do you think any of the Halo... I know, I know Halo 5 got a T rating, but do you think any of the Halo games deserve M ratings? No. Exactly. You got the you got the, only, the only closest thing... I, and then, trust me, you don't need to be 17 to fucking see this. Um, the most... I don't really think Halo was probably the flood stuff, which watching people get infected into mutant, bloating pus balls. But other than that, no. But you don't need to be 17 to see that. It's freaking ridiculous. Yeah, and, um, and we're kind of going way off topic, but to stay back on topic, I don't think the Persona games deserve M ratings either. Yeah, no, they don't. Not. Which ones do have M ratings? I can't remember. Okay, Persona 3 has an M rating. Persona 4, Nocturne, or, or pretty much all the SMT games on oh, PS2 damn. have M ratings. Damn. Um, Persona what about Q, which, well, I saw that, I laughed really hard. <laughs> Persona I mean, Q has an M rating? The game's like, they're, they're cute little chibis, and the game's got an M rating. <laughs> oh, that's insane, man. Yeah. <laughs> Chibi Persona has a, is, you have to be 17 to play this game. It will scar you for life. I can imagine the it. GameStop clerk giving you a weird look when you buy it. Just be like, this game's M-rated. This game, this <laughs> yeah. must be some hentai or something. Yeah, some lolicon here. <laughs> like Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II. That, the original on PS3 has an M-rating. Yeah. Because a character, do you want to know why? Because there's a character why? that licks people. Like, like not in suggestive places, just licks people. Like a dog. So, okay, so I guess my dog is, is a sexual... Is, yeah, is, is... you have to be 17 to own a dog. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see how that's how it is. Uh, Let me see what other... SM, I know SMT4 is rated M. SMT4 Apocalypse is most likely going to be M. Yeah, oh yeah, Apocalypse is definitely going to be M. Persona uh, 5 is also probably going to be M. Yeah. Tokyo Mirage Session, with all the censorship they do with it, it better be teen. <laughs> uh, Soul Hackers is M. Yeah, I'm I'm 90% sure Tokyo Mirage Sessions is going to be teen. Yeah, with all the heavy censorship they've done on it, freak. I mean, even without it, it, w it probably would have been teen. Yeah, well, no, they probably would have looked at some girls, like, in a bikini and be like, Oh, no, that's nudity. <laughs> like, honestly, kids and people go to fucking beaches, you know? I'm not talking about a new beach, I'm talking about just fucking normal beaches. And they see a hell of a lot more revealing stuff than that. Damn it, and that's real life. Real people. Ugh, oh, fuck, stupid bullshit stuff. Oh, yeah... You there, dude? Oh, okay. 
Yep. So, is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, do we have any emails? No, we don't. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, I suppose he's just you know, put the last video. You know, maybe I'll... I think I'll just stop asking for emails and just go to S- the s and Tribe Facebook group and just ask people. Be like, hey, we're about to start podcasting. You guys have any questions? Yeah, yeah. That might, that might, that might, yeah, that might be, we might get more stuff for that. Good idea. Yeah, I think we will get a lot more stuff for that. All right, so I guess one other thing we could talk about is what we're playing. Jeff, where are you playing? Uh, I was just playing a bit of Halo 5. Of course you were. Halo 5 is amazing, dude. It's, 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 it's like God's gift to gamers, you know? I need to get an Xbox One. You do, because honestly, you enjoy a lot more on PS4, I guarantee. I, I haven't even used my PS4 that much recently. Neither have I. have only used it for Dragon Age Inquisition, which like, theoretically could have gone Xbox One if I wanted to. But one, the reason I asked is because one game, the, the game I've been playing recently that I really want to talk about is the Trauma Center series. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. A really good series. John Trauma Center. Seriously, it, it's really fun. Like, at first it might seem like an anime soap opera or something, you know, it's not very good. But then, later on, the story goes into this, like, a big epic battle between doctors and these medical terrorists using man-made viruses. I was just looking at your profile pic on the Skype, in our yeah. Skype group. Um, I was just thinking, you can probably role play, you can probably cosplay as that, as that guy pretty, pretty yeah, I, easily. Yeah, I want to. Like you, you look quite like for like a real life person compared to an anime person. You look pretty close to him. Yeah, that's Derek Styles from Trauma Center Second Opinion. Yeah, you could really cosplay as him easily. What? Um, also, and basically the gameplay in Trauma Center, it's you perform surgery on people, and it's when you really think about it, all you're doing is pointing and clicking, like you suture wounds and stuff. And, and you operate on people to treat their diseases and stuff, and but it's actually really fun, and it's also really difficult. The game starts out pretty easy, but it gradually gets harder, and the, the end date levels are just extremely hard. And it's well, really you know, how many how many games out there are based on trauma stuff? I mean, that's, that's quite original concept. There's only um, five games in the series right now. Yeah, the last, I, I don't know many people one, games who... The most recent stuff. one was Trauma Team, which I wasn't the biggest fan of, because basically what it did was it replaced the visual novel style narrative with this comic with these comic cutscenes, which by themselves isn't bad. But I mean, it's it's a game about doctors who live in yeah. work in a hospital and they treat patients. Also, the story was more lighthearted. There's no more of that. There's there's no more of that war of med over medicine which I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've been playing. Um, even though I said I've been playing, I was just playing Halo Five. But the game I've actually like been playing a lot lately it was actually Armored Core Four uh, for the PS3. Um, I love Mecha. I must say before. I love Mecha. I love. I absolutely love Mecha. I watch a Mecha anime. I play Mecha games. I if it's Mecha, if it's big robots, I love it. Um, or suits or whatever, I love it. Um, really recommend Armor Core um, to anyone who likes Mecha. Um, the newer ones can be a little bit more complex to get into if you're a new pl- player. You might you might get really overwhelmed quickly uh, with the custom the sheer amount of customization there is. Um, but I highly recommend Armor Core games. They are absolutely phenomenally fun, and you can really like trust me. When I say you can really customize your mech to, to however. There's so many. You can have your like your mech as a quad four leg thing that can hover if you want it to. Like it, there's so many customizations you can do. Um, you literally basically build each part of the body. Um, and including in- internal like um, hardware such as like engine and stuff like that. And paint is you can paint any, any pattern you want, design you want, decals on them. I recommend Armor Core to people. You know, build a community, build online, or especially in the Armor Core uh, Verk Day, which is the one that still has the line. 
going and highly recommend that game if you like Mecha. Yeah. <laughs> but but back to what I was saying about Trauma Center, there's five games in the series, three of them are on Wii, two of them are on DS, and one of them, Second Opinion, which is the first one on the Wii, is really just a remake of Under the Knife, which is the first one on DS, so if you played sec so if you play Second Opinion, you don't really need to play Under the Knife, but there's also Under the Knife Two, which is a different game and it's also on the DS. Yeah. And and these games are pretty cheap too. I mean, it's a really to, underrated series. I'll have to look next time I go to my local retro game store. I'll have to look for uh, some of the Trauma Center games. Yeah, it's great. You should definitely yeah, they look it. interesting. All right. Well, that's really all I have to talk about for this episode. Yep. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See you next week. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.